Hello everybody, I'm Scott Stengel from the Melco Applications team and today we're going to give you a little bit of help on small lettering. What a topic, huh? We could spend a week on this, but hopefully uh, I'm going to give you some tips um, that's going to help improve your small lettering. So, as uh, everybody should know, um, there is a limit on how small lettering can go. And a lot of times customers don't understand this, so I'd like to share something that I used to use uh, with my customers that helped them understand this concept. Um, if we talk about uh, signing your name on a check, but use a Sharpie magic marker and no fair filling in the letters and it has to look like your signature, that um, seemed to really uh, help the customer understand that, yeah, the thread has a certain diameter, just like the end of the Sharpie, and so we're kind of limited to how small we can go. We aren't working with dots here, we're working with thread, and it uh, makes a big difference. So, uh, first of all, why can't we sew uh, everything that we can print? I'm going to switch to the uh, design shop so that we can carry on from here. Um, first of all, we need to have a wide enough stroke. So what is a stroke? So let me open a simple design here and we will show you. So <clears throat> here is a letter. This red dot represents the diameter of a needle, believe it or not. This is roughly a quarter inch letter. So you can see that uh, with lettering we have a zigzag which goes from one side to the other, back and forth, back and forth. The thinner that the stroke gets, and that's the width of each leg of a letter, um, the harder it is to embroider them. So first of all we want to pick a nice heavy uh, thick font because if we don't the needle is just going to be pounding down the middle of the letter and doesn't have uh, left to right motion and so your lettering quality is really really going to suffer. Um, basically since our needle is seven and a half points in embroidery we need to have much larger than that uh, for the width of the stroke of the letter. So basically 10 to 12 points wide um, is a good uh, uh, point to shoot for on, on the width of the strokes that it can allow it to sew well. So we have a ruler which is up top in Design Shop. I use this to measure how wide stuff is and if I measure this letter right here it's five points. The needle is seven and a half points. That's not going to work well. This is going to be a terrible looking letter um, when we sew it. Alright, so uh, <clears throat> another little help is you want to make sure that you don't promise what you can't deliver. And uh, a kind of a big problem that uh, people can run into, and I used to run into, is if you view the artwork, uh, let's say of this left chest logo that you're doing or something like that, at a full screen of 22 inches or something huge like that, you, you can tell your customer, sure, yeah, we can do that, no problem. And then when you actually reduce it down to the three inch wide size or whatever people are going to use, um, you see that it can't be done because it's too thin. So what I always found helped me was to take uh, the printed logo and shrink it down to the final size that, the, that it's going to be uh, embroidered. And uh, if it's on screen, I used to use a clear plastic ruler with uh, red markings on it, just so that um, you can measure how tall the letters are and stuff like that. So I will run up a design. Uh, here is a vector. And you can see, like I say, if we see it huge, uh, on screen, we tell the customer, sure, that's easily doable. But if I view it at the actual size, you can see that this is way, way too small. So I can then uh, tell my customer I have to modify the artwork. And so what I would recommend is let's take the small text at the bottom and enlarge it uh, unproportionally to the rest of the logo because they probably wouldn't want the whole logo to be five inches wide just so we have room for the small uh, lettering. 
So this can be done in a graphics program like uh, Adobe or uh, Corel or something like that. But this happens to be an EPS file, so um, I can easily modify it in Design Shop. Simply a matter of just select the letters. Now I can see that the height, these are 0.13, if you can see down here. Uh, generally, uh, I would stop at about uh, two tenths of an inch as far as the minimum if I'm using 40 weight thread. We're going to talk about thinner weight threads in a bit here, but the first part of this starts out with common 40 weight thread. So all I would need to do here would boost it up, be to boost it up, oh, maybe 150 percent, something like that. Then when I click on it, it becomes larger. Maybe I can move it down proportion, uh, space-wise, something like that. And something like this is going to work much better than the original. Um, <clears throat> again, explain to your customer of the uh, Sharpie example, and that's going to help you out. Um, it's going to help them understand it much, much better. Okay, so when we let's uh, talk next about alphabet um, selection. So I shall close this. Um, digitizers make letters differently based on their size. So I'll just throw some one inch letters. Uh, we'll just do a T. That's going to show what I want. So I will boost this up um, so we can have a look. Like I said, digitizers make letters differently based on their size. And so uh, if this was a large letter, uh, and I had stitched this part up and I was going to come over this way and finish here. I'm going to have a gap here because the uh, stitches intersect at 90 degrees. That is not a problem with small lettering. It's not even going to show, but with large lettering it does show. So digitizers will take a little bit of extra uh, effort here and add a few stitches so that it will cover up the gap at the large size. That's going to create a clump or a problem when it comes to small lettering. So, um, first of all, it's very important which alphabet you pick. So here's the alphabet selection. Version 10, we categorize the alphabets uh, uh, per uh, type of letter, serif letters, block, script, monogram, special, stuff like that. So we have a micro section. It'd be important that we start there. Here you can see there is uh, a bunch of alphabets that are just made to go small. Now these will not look good large and vice versa. So we want to start with an, uh, a font that is made to go small. All right. <clears throat> it's also very important that uh, true type um, isn't a good choice. True type is uh, generated by the computer. It's what runs all your fonts and windows and all that kind of stuff. But uh, with, with certain fonts, um, well, you can see certain letters and certain fonts really have a, a hard time. And right here we can see the computer generated this from a true type font, and it really doesn't understand how to do these intersections. So if I shrank this down to, uh, you know, a quarter of an inch, um, it's just not going to yield good results. All right. So we, we're going to use the micro category when possible if you're going to use alphabet text. And they are graded different ways. Uh, the newer alphabets that contain uh, all the new bells and whistles and stuff uh, are done are indicated by stars, and yield signs are for uh, older alphabets. Still very usable. You just don't want to stretch them as far um, in places as you can uh, with the starred alphabets. So um, micro block is one that I digitized and that I like. Has all the euro characters in it. If we look here at the flyout, we can see that the suggested minimum height is two tenths of an inch, or just over five uh, <coughs> millimeters. Um, and the, the max size on this is 0.35. It doesn't go an inch. It doesn't go two inches, but it's meant to go small. All right, so we will pick um, micro block or one of the micro series to help us with uh, good small letters talked about the grading system. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the strokes. So I have a sample here. Uh, 
This is, uh, what, seven alphabets from Melco um, that are in our software, and I ran them at a quarter of an inch or so. Um, remember we talked about the diameter of the needle and how it affects the uh, satin stitch sewing? So right here we have an alphabet called curly, very popular, um, but not a great choice for small letters. If I uh, highlight it and go with the flyout, you can see that the minimum size is recommended at a half inch. So this becomes very thin. When I go in and measure how wide are those satin stitches I'm trying to stitch with the ruler, we can see that we are really pretty thin five or six points. So that's not even the diameter of the needle. So there's no way the satin stitch is going to look good because it doesn't have room to cross over. Also look at these at the end. The font uh, happens to be stylized into sort of swirls. This is not going to look good um, at, a, at a quarter of an inch. We move on to, here's another one that's commonly used, New Times Roman great looking font, but when I go to the flyout, it's a half inch minimum. A better choice would be to use micro times. It's in the micro series and it's meant to go small. We can see it now and you can see that it is a much thicker font than curly. That's why it's going to produce good results at a quarter of an inch or smaller. If I look at uh, another one here in the micro section, which is mini micro times, this is made to go really small. The flyout shows 0.17 to a quarter of an inch. That's it. It doesn't look good at a half inch because it's made for small letters. This would be a good choice for a quarter inch and under if you have a serif, which is a flare at the end of uh, the letters. This is a good one to um, practice and try. Now I move on to some other ones, Athletic Sands. Eh, it's getting thicker. If I measure the width of the strokes, it comes in at 12 points. So this one is pretty good. Also Rounded Sands is a little bit thicker. In industry, here's a script one that's a nice heavyweight font. So all these are going to produce good results um, for smaller letters, but not so much the thinner fonts um, like curly or deco block there's some other ones very very thin all right so uh, I'm going to talk about some properties now because it's important that you assign the right properties to the letters um, to get good results so I will call up the properties window here and already we talked about the alphabet selection uh, thicker fonts or micro is going to be your best choice and we'll just kind of uh, uh, work our way um, through the properties real quick so that we get uh, nice selecting uh, letters. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, uh, center out letters, horizontal stitch order right here to, to sew the letters from the middle to the outside and then the middle to the other side is very important on certain fabrics. Um, you'll find that uh, Oh, dry weave, four-way stretch, sometimes under armor, things like that is a very popular fabric now. It's really, really important that you push this the uh, fabric away from the middle of the design and don't sew left to right. You're going to get a lot of puckering. Man, that stuff just puckers when you look at it, it seems. Um, so what I uh, recommend in class here is set up all your letters to be center out. It's only uh, going to help uh, difficult fabrics, but also it sets you up for future orders. Let's say that your customer placed a left chest order on uh, piquet polos or something now, and if you set up the lettering left to right, uh, then they come back and order hats six months later. You have to go and edit uh, your, your properties and stuff. So my recommendation is set everything up for center out letters and uh, you're only all set then when they order the hats. Okay, so I pick it right there. I'll hit apply. We're going to move through some of these um, different properties. Next, hey, I'll... Scott, can please. you pause for half a second? Um, there, there's a little bit of confusion with 10 to 12 point wide letters. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think you mean that the letter needs to be 10 to 12 points wide. The stroke. The, the, the column or the satin. Just make sure your stitches are 10 to 12 points long. Correct? Yes. So here's the ruler. So this is what I'm considering to be 10 or 12 points. It's not the whole letter itself. I don't care what the letter is. Right. But the strokes within the letter, we need to be fat enough to support a satin stitch. Sorry if I was confusing about that. No, I think, I think you're good. Hillary, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, top stitching. With small lettering, it's really important that, you, that the, we get in, we do the letter, and we get out. We're not going to goof around in there. We're not going to add any extraneous stitches. We just want to do it and get in, get out. We're going to get the crispest, best results. So part of that starts with density. I don't want a very high density, and I don't need one. Generally, the rule of thumb is the the smaller or thinner something is, the less stitches per inch or density that it needs. So for small letters, a quarter inch and under uh, with 40 weight thread, 4.0 is a good choice. 4.2 um, sometimes. When it comes to performance wear, try 4.5. We want to keep as many stitches off of that uh, uh, performance wear as we possibly can. So the lighter, um, the better. You'll know when you went too far. Um, but 4.0 to 4.2, sometimes 4.5 works good for uh, letters that are, say, 0.2 of an inch instead of a quarter. All right, that uh, is top stitching. The next thing is short stitches. So I want to show you some of this. I will just open up a new window. We'll go here. And I will do an R. Okay, when we move in here, what are short stitches? <clears throat> short stitches uh, are, are used to um, help even out um, both uh, the inside and the outside edges of uh, a letter in this case. You can see here that the stitches don't go all, all stitches don't go all the way back to the inside edge. Some of them stop two thirds, half, three quarters short um, because there is a lot more surface area on the outside than there is on the inside. So if we brought all the stitches back to the inside, we'd have a pile of thread here. Um, and we don't want that. So short stitches are an automatic feature uh, to turn on and off in Design Shop. It's right here under the top stitching tab right here. Um, so the rule of thumb is, of course, on small letters, I do not want to have short stitches. Because you think about it, if my needle was, like I showed you, seven and a half points, and the whole width of my satin stitch is 12, I don't want to go two-thirds or half of that, or I get a very tight stitch and a possible thread break. So generally, small lettering has no short stitches. The larger the letter gets, the more uh, short stitches are important. With Design Shop, you can just leave short stitches on because if we look under the uh, Advanced tab, we have it set up so that it will automatically disable the short stitches when we're less than 20 points wide. So in a nutshell, just leave short stitches on and uh, Design Shop will give them to you when you need them and it will not give them to you when you don't. Underlay is very, very important. <clears throat> So I'm going to go back to my sample of micro block. We'll go up here to a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> we need some foundation stitching. We need something to tack the top material to the backing so it's stable when we do the final top stitching. That's, of course, underlay. Uh, several ways to do this. We have an underlay tab under object properties. The simple method is to just turn on auto underlay. Um, the problem with auto underlay is it's set up as an average for everything because you can't pick different values for uh, different jobs. And so we have to pick sort of something that will work good for average things. Small letters take a little bit more attention. So I'm not going to use auto underlay. I am going to turn on center walk because I only have room 
down the center of the letter for stitch. I mean, this is so small at a quarter of an inch, there's not a ton of room for a bunch of underlay, nor is it needed. So I'm going to set the center walk, center walk as my uh, underlay type, but I'm going to shorten the stitch length. I'm going to try 18 points, and I'll apply that. The reason is, if I have a very long uh, underlay stitch length, I have uh, long stitches that could possibly hang out of the side of the letter. Um, of course, that's not going to look good, so uh, generally the smaller the letter, the tighter the underlay stitch length. 18 points is a good one to try there. Okay, uh, along with that, under the Advanced tab, we have a uh, feature here called the Travel Stitch Length. And for this, um, oh, I'll just start with something simple. Here is a letter I, a block letter I. Um, alphabets have to be very flexible, and so... <clears throat> Um, you might sew this letter left to right, you might sew this letter, you know, right to left, depending if it's center out, it might be on an arc, it might be tilted forward. There's a lot of uh, uh, different options for the sew order for all the letters, so they have to be very flexible. So, uh, in some cases, um, I'll show you this R, uh, it might exit down here. Other cases, it might exit back here. So the, the software has to be flexible and generate walk stitches to get to different areas so it can change the sew er uh, order of the letter. So that is travel length. And we also want to tighten this up because, same reason as the underlay, we don't want it hanging out the side of the letters. So that is under the Advanced tab. And uh, it is, let's see... It is travel length right here. I like to set it at try uh, the same as you have for your uh, center walk. 18 points seems to work good. Smaller letters, I might go down to 16. All right, so travel length is important. Um, you can shorten that up also. Then um, another uh, huge part of your properties is the tie stitches that you use. Tie stitches are uh, the uh, few stitches that go together to start the machine tying the top thread to the bobbin thread and also before a trim we need to have a couple of stitches that are located in the letter that lock the thread down so that when the garment is washed um, the stitches don't fall out. So there are different um, there's the tie and the tie off tab. There are different uh, five different settings. Plus, also in Design Shop, you can digitize your own uh, tie ins and tie offs if you have a, a pattern that you like. Um, what I recommend you trying is use uh, style one. Style two, three, and four are not really for small lettering. Style five is a plus sign and um, it gets to be pretty big. I mean here if you can see that the lock stitch is is uh, whoops sorry about that goes across you know almost the whole letter so a better choice would be one that stitches in line and so this will go back and forth without spreading out to the side so less chance of uh, hanging out. The thread crosses over itself so that helps lock it in when it starts up. Okay, so style one, um, you can set all the default values uh, or leave them as the default. The way that it works is we decide based on the width of the satin stitch how many tie stitches you have. So you'll get two stitches on a teeny little letter, but as you go larger and larger and larger, you get more and more stitches, which is what you want. Because when we have inch and a half letters, two inch letters, we need a fair amount of lock stitches, four or five, to make sure it's good and secured and doesn't come out uh, in wear and tear or in the wash. Okay, so I'm just going to turn on style one. I'm going to turn uh, tie in and tie off for both of them, and I can just leave the values um, as they are. Uh, with the new design shop, we actually have set this to three 
and this to 7. That's just a really, really good uh, uh, tie-in system right there. Okay, so another very important concept is pull compensation right here. I have everybody in class say, repeat after me, pull compensation is your friend. It is. It will. F f what happens is fatter stitches tend to just look crisper and better, and that's what people want. This doesn't mean you have to get carried away, and everything you do has to be, you know, smashed, flat, huge, fat. Um, but thicker is going to generally look much clearer and crisper than thinner. In embroidery. We always get shrinkage and distortion of, of the elements, the shapes. What happens is it stitches this direction, and so it's always going to shrink on the sides. And it has to displace that shrinkage somewhere, so it pushes up the thread on the top and the bottom. How much? Well, that depends on kind of the fabric that you're using, but we'll say on an average knit fabric, you get about 10% shrinkage. So I want to add that back in the form of pull compensation um, so the letter looks nice and full when it comes out. Remember, we don't care what the letter or the design looks like on the screen. If it's distorted and things look weird, that's probably a good thing because the digitizer took the time to distort the shapes in the design so they come out looking good on the fabric which is really all we care about. Okay so I want to show you an example here of uh, some hats. So first of all Got to start my JPEG viewer. Sorry, always good when you go live, right? All righty. So here is a, a hat um, that was done, and uh, you can see uh, the letters. Um, are very distorted and very thin. This was done without adding any pull comp and it was done with a pretty thin font. So just by going in and adding pull comp to the design um, <clears throat> you can see it turns out looking like this. Much much better. Much thicker, fuller, more readable one versus the other. See how the difference in the two? So add pull compensation to everything you do. So and how much again was that? A point or two? Uh, one point. Cool. Okay, so here's the pull comp tab right here. We have two different methods to add pull compensation. Um, first one is in percentage. This is what we had, oh, back to the 80s. Um, we have a new one called pull offset, and that's the one I recommend you use all the time. The difference is the percentage can distort the edges of the letter a little bit if they're different widths to begin with. The strokes are much different widths. Pull offset just moves everything out a certain distance so everything lines up. Be careful because what the number you put in here is doubled because it's to each side. So start with one. That's one additional point to each side. Hit apply, that letter becomes fatter. It's going to give much better results. If you want to go extreme, you can try something like two. And that is, uh, you know, four points more out of our 10 is, or 12 is, is a pretty much additional um, increase for width. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you generally will increase uh, pull compensation the smaller the letters get. So I will show you an example I have here. This shows, uh, what is this, a block, micro block. So right here we have 0.3 inch letters. And if I look at the pull compensation, you can see that I have it set at one. That yields some pretty decent thick letters. Now when I go down and highlight this, this is 2 tenth inch letters basically, so smaller. But look, I turned up the pull offset to two. 
I have to keep increasing it the smaller I get, or those letters are going to keep getting thinner and thinner, and I'll get the distortion that I showed you earlier. So start with one point of uh, absolute uh, pull offset, and if that doesn't work, try two. Um, but again, remember that pull compensation is going to give you much crisper, thicker results. A lot of the stuff that I see is just way too thin um, to, to hold its uh, shapes. And so um, please use pull comp. So a huge thing is, um, you know, how do we connect uh, the letters together? Because that really helps decide on the quality um, also. So um, <clears throat> right here, basically you have three options on how you connect letters together. Uh, my least favorite option is to trim every letter. The problem is that the machine needs to get a rhythm to sew really good small lettering. And so if you're telling the machine to stop and trim every hundred stitches, because that's basically about how much are in quarter inch letters per letter, um, it never gets a rhythm. It wants to keep sewing, keep up to speed, and you'll get the best quality that way. Customers are really picky today on, I want every letter trimmed. I don't like those little connectors between um, the, the, you know, between each letter. Unfortunately, um, that's really the way to make the letters so good. So one option would be to move the letters closer. I can change uh, spacing right here and move them horizontally closer together. So you can see that I've done it here. Um, so that you're less apt to see the thread that carries between the letters. I like to trim between words, but I like to walk between. So along that line, I want to change under my top stitching, uh, sorry, under letters, I want to change the connection type to closest point. What that does is it's going to reorganize the sequence of the letters so that they join at the closest uh, parts. That's your best choice. <clears throat> um, the other problem with trimming between every letter is if I do that, I'm going to add an additional three stitches to the letter for the tie-in stitches. Then I'm going to stitch it, and I'm going to have to put a couple extra stitches in as the tie-off stitches. So I'm adding five or six stitches per letter. On teeny letters, that can really give you um, some distortion. Um, <clears throat> so moving them closer together is something that you can work uh, with your customer on. Um, use closest point connection um, and uh, don't trim between letters. The other option um, that you could do would be to use what we call auto tie. So here under the tie in tab, tie off tab, um, towards the bottom of the window we have auto tie right here. What this does is this leaves the thread, it will, you, you, it will do lock stitches to tie in the letter, but it will trail the thread and it will do tie, uh, tie off stitches, sorry, at the end of this letter, trail the thread and tie in stitches at the start of the next one. I would go in with some small scissors when I'm done and clip um, those. Um, that keeps the machine up to speed because it doesn't have to stop and trim. Um, it depends how much finish work that you want to uh, have, uh, you know, how much you're willing to do. If I set this um, and I can set it to uh, oh, a larger number, um, something like uh, we'll try 80, and then it will uh, it will trim between. Uh, it will not trim between the the words. It will leave the thread trailing, and uh, I want to turn off auto trim. And then I get thread, as you can see here, that's going to connect. Now there is a tie-off. If I show you 3D, there's a tie-off here, trails the thread, and there is a tie-in here. So the thread is secured. You just don't want to start trimming thread um, unless you're, sec you're for sure that the, the, it's secured um, by lock stitches. All right, a lot of times people say, well, your letters are very uneven when I sew them, and that has to do with the alphabet itself. Um, 
if I spell um, capital, I'll show you uh, Alco International Letters. We'll go to uh, Micro, and we'll set this at 0.2. All right. So if I look at this letter, you can see by the selection box that certain letters are taller than others. This is what we call height compensation. Uh, the micro series of alphabets are height compensated because there's a small range of size that you want to use them. From 0.2 to 0.35 is a lot different than expecting a letter to go from a half inch to two or two and a half inches. Um, so we, I height compensated these letters. They look bad on the screen. It's like, how could this ever so well? The M is shorter than the E. That's done on purpose because, like I was explaining earlier, we get shrinkage on the sides and we get push on the top and the bottom. So this letter is sewing horizontally, this satin stitch, so it's going to push up, so we need to cut it off. The T right next to it, it's sewing the other direction. It's uh, up and down at the uh, height line. So it's actually shrinking. So this is going to get shorter, or this is going to get taller. So if I start with the letters the same height, the N will show taller than the T or the E when it comes out sewing. Um, if I use a regular alphabet, like I didn't want to use one of the uh, micros, let's just uh, start with a oh, block, how about? Um, I can height compensate the letters pretty simple. I just select the letter by the X and then I have a box around it. And so I can just shrink it in height and now it is shorter than the E next to it. The problem exists when you have letters uh, like the M where you need to shorten the top and the bottom. If I select it and I shrink it, it only shrinks from the top. So the best thing to do there is to shrink it twice the amount that you're going to go for and then move it off the baseline. The way I do that is I hold control, click on the letter, and then I can move it up. So I shrink it down and I've moved it up and now this is height compensated so that it's going to look good when it sews. So you could zip through the letters if you picked a different non-height compensated font and uh, fix them up and you'll get even um, letters <coughs> um, throughout the whole text. Okay, uh, so what happens if you're uh, starting with a, an expanded file? It wasn't created in uh, OFM and so it is just basically a stitch file. So I will run uh, let me see. Here is basically this could be a DST file. Okay, so this is just expanded stitches, no wireframe um, uh, information in the file. Well, you can see that it is very, very thin. Well, it's not in wireframe, so what do I do? Well, I have two choices. I could select it right click and here under operations I could convert it to wireframe. Sometimes that's your best choice. Other times it adds a lot of distortion um, trying to figure out uh, how things should be. A better choice sometimes if all I want to do is fatten it up is to go into the scale key. So I right click on a selected element, I go in click on scale and then right here I have a pull comp right here. So here, let's just show you three, hit apply, and OK. So I've added pull comp to this letter, but I haven't turned it back to wireframe, which is going to add some distortion. It is possible to just select the lettering out of a, an expanded design like DST or um, EXP and uh, modify the letters without affecting the whole rest of the design. Um, I can see I've way shot past my half hour, <laughs> so uh, we're going to have another one coming up on very fine threads, and uh, you can see how much, much smaller letters can get, and um, uh, so we got a lot of cool examples for um, stuff like that. Uh, one more uh, thing I want to share with you is a lot of times... Um, you need something behind small letters if your fabric is really, really thick. So let's take an example of uh, polar fleece. And 
And we'll just run uh, something up here. So if this was just a, a text uh, word or something like that, and it's on polar fleece, it can still sink way into the polar fleece. So what I found used to work pretty good is to just put a fill behind it. And if you make the fill in the same thread color as the garment, it tends to be kind of invisible and uh, uh, will still make the letters stand up because they're over a fill. So very easy to create this fill behind it. I can just grab the complex fill tool and I can grab the uh, rectangle input and just make a fill behind it. Turn this into stitching. And um, that back fill will really help these letters stand up off of the uh, fabric instead of getting uh, sunken in. Sometimes even Solvi and all that kind of stuff is not going to make two tenth inch letters show up good on super thick fabrics. So that's another option. And if I sew it, like I said, in the garment color, I should be in um, good shape. Um, I've used it in the past and it looks really good. Now, all that I've been telling you about small letters and properties and, and how to make uh, pick alphabets that work and all that stuff, it's all also reliant on how you sew it. So th there, it can't be understated the importance of really, really good backing. First of all, no tearaway on knits. I've seen people really slaughter some of my better digitized letters by using a cheap um, garment with tearaway backing on it. Um, when it comes to performance wear, there, uh, there are a couple options there. You can sandwich backing. Sometimes we'll take a layer of two ounce uh, cutaway and put a layer of no-show in the middle and then have the fabric on top and then facing on top of that. That is a really good combo and to lightly spray the backing so they stick together will really give you good results on performance wear. Also, uh, Madeira um, has a product called Cut Performance Backing, which is a woven backing that's really good for um, that type of fabric. Um, also, small needles are important. Um, you want to try and use a 65. It's going to give you the best, best results on very, very small lettering. Quarter inch letters, you got a 75, you're going to be in good shape. Um, the no-show sandwich of uh, cutaway at the bottom, no-show in the middle, and the fabric on the top is really something you need to try. Can you do me a favor real quick? Please. Can you go back to your expanded example? Sure. I'll close this guy. So, uh, Karen asked, is there a way to um, select just a single letter out of that? Uh, May, maybe is yeah, the answer, that's, right? that's kind of where I was too. I'm like, well, you could use, you know, if you if you insert a trim or split it, then sure. Yeah. See, what this did is it made COMP one element and uh, uh, the ANY another. Um, small text. You'd want to modify I, one letter. I I can't come up with why unless she's trying to height adjust it. Um, yeah. I mean, another option would. Be you could go into your expanded uh, editing mode. That's the other thing, and, and use and use then, the lasso or the um, well, I would or just, shift. Just grab one yeah, side, yeah. and then I can use the arrows, and now I'm just. That's a handy that. way to do it too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, expanded editing tends to be a, a lot of work. Um, Sometimes, yeah, but, but that's kind of Karen. That's about where where we're looking for that. Uh, yes, and Sam's saying kind of using the custom point selection tool, and that's what I was referring to when I mistakenly called it the lasso because that's what I think of it as. <laughs> um, so thank you, Sam. Yeah, here's the custom select. In yeah. case I wanted to go in and select just, just a, one just part a of a curved yeah. shape that I can't get with a, um, a regular. Uh, so hopefully, page. hopefully that answers some questions. Um, and then Keith is talking about. Uh, doing stuff on the side of a more open material like a mesh. Oh, yes. And I'm, I'm going to throw in that, you know, using a, a fill to go under that to give it something to sew onto other than open air exactly. is going to help you out. And sometimes uh, even cut away backing behind the mesh because you've got to have something to sew on. We can't sew on air, of course, because there's no loop created on the upstroke of the needle. 
So uh, we get that because the mesh back hats are getting to be kind of popular these days. And uh, a fill, if you can do it, or combination of a little cutaway plus a fill would probably yeah, give you the best not, results. Yeah, not be a bad way to go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, I could talk for six more hours. I think we should do another session on small lettering. That's funny. Cause <laughs> I'm, I'm going through here looking at, uh, as Scott mentioned, um, we may be working on one with uh, some smaller thread or some different thread weights coming up. <laughs> and so um, I, I think that's next week. Um, I'm pulling in a bunch of kind of thoughts from this as well. Um, he's mentioning small needles. I will definitely talk about that. Larger needle size only gets you so far. Um, so think about all that stuff. And uh, yeah, keep an eye on this Facebook Live stuff. You bet. Half hour goes way too fast. I went 45 minutes. I don't know and how long I'll be. I probably covered half of what I had uh, planned on doing. So <laughs> we'll come back and do more. So uh, again, thanks for uh, joining us. I uh, hope you got some good uh, tips. And join us again. We're going to be covering a ton more topics. Thanks, you guys. Have a good day.